Hello. Allow me to tell you how Missoula came to be. Through time immemorial, members of the Salish tribe heading east through the valley on their way to bison hunting grounds would have to pass through the narrow and heavily wooded gap made by Mount Jumbo to the north and Mount Sentinel to the south. It was here that the Blackfoot tribe would often lie in ambush, waiting to attack and kill all intruders and leaving the dead as a warning. French trappers passing through in the 1820s were horrified at the sight, a field of human bones left like a carpet at the mouth of the valley, and they called the area Port de Enfer, or the Hell Gate. And well, the name stuck. In 64, Hellgate trading post operators Christopher Higgins and Francis Warden wanted to divest themselves from this demonic moniker. So when they built their lumber and flour mills a few miles away, at the swiftest part of the Hellgate River, where they could harvest the glacial waters as power, they searched for a new name. Finally settling on the local Salish word for the area, giving it the name Missoula Mills. Thinking Missoula meant the place by the cold water. Unknown to the white settlers that flocked to the new location, while that is a literal translation, the tribes had always used that word metaphorically. You see, to them, what it means is the place chilled by fear. Names have a certain power. This has always been so in the Deadlands. We are down. We have three players this week, and we're back from a little hiatus uh, for taken for our own mental health issues. Uh, and uh, I want to welcome all here back to the stream. My name is Cheyenne Wright. I am your marshal for tonight, and we're going to go really quick, just straight across the board here, starting with uh, Jameson Jim Freeman. Say hello and tell him your real name. Hi, everybody. I am Candace Magnificent, playing Jem Freeman. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and I am so excited to be back gaming with everybody tonight. And then next on the lineup, we have in the uh, the role of Amadeus Amy Haddock. Say hello. Hello, y'all. Todd, Todd Moonbounce here, uh, playing the role of Amy Haddock, uh, doing my best to keep these other two in line. And... Uh, also, very excited to get back in the saddle here with you all tonight. And lastly, but not leastly, and back from his uh, uh, double hiatus, we have uh, playing Clayton R. McTaggart. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Howard, the uh, host of Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard at Howard underscore Ryan Gregg on Twitter and Instagram, and it is great to be back. <laughs> All right, so um, where we last left off, Clayton McTaggart had been thrown in jail uh, just to sleep uh, just to sleep on what he'd done to poor Bodie, uh, and was given the the given the sentence of disturbing the peace by the local sheriff uh, and held overnight. Um, but the sheriff apparently didn't have that high of a value on Bodie and, uh, has, and has taken a liking to you after you're helping with him at the cabin in the woods. 
Meanwhile, uh, Amy and Bob Morrow were raced to the Sisters of Providence Hospital in order to deal with their little prairie tick problem. Um, you received word, Clayton, that your friends are still alive. Uh, they, uh, it was a harrowing experience, but they, they pulled through. Uh, while you're set up in said jail cell, you and Sheriff Moses have a little conversation. And he says, So, did you have a particular reason for gunning down Bodie? Well, the way I saw it, he was running his mouth, and it was only a matter of time before someone pulled iron. Yeah. He's a bit jumpy, that one was. It's going to happen sooner or later, I suppose. I'm sorry I was the one to do it. It is uh, one of the callings of my profession that I have to ask you, what are you doing in Missoula? Well, my friends and I just rolled into town a few days ago. We've all got various reasons for coming here. I didn't ask about your friends. Let's just say I'm looking for someone. All right. You a bounty hunter? No. Good this answer. Is, uh, strictly personal. Ah, well, personal. Do I need to go to, over to the uh, Undertakers and have them start with another? That shouldn't be. Do I have to go over to the Undertakers and start working on, an, have them work on another coffin? That shouldn't be necessary. As far as I can tell, the fella I'm looking for ain't here, but someone who knows where he is might be. Who's the fella you're looking for? <laughs> you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, I've seen quite a lot. Just... In the last 24 hours, saw a man's rib cage rip open by prairie ticks. Humor me. Well, we did uh, share a fight. We had each other's backs. So I guess I can let you know. His name, uh, John Wesley Harden, mean anything to you, Sheriff? Oh, I don't think there's anybody who hasn't heard the name John Wesley Harden. Thought he was in prison. I thought so too, but there ain't no prison that can hold that devil of a man. Huh. Sheriff seems to think about it for a moment. And if you find this John Wesley Harden, what's your plan? Holt Frontier holds six bullets. I got two of them, so my plan's to put twelve in his eyes. I see. You got a bit of a uh, snake venom in you, don't you? Let's just say when a man kills your friends and leaves you to bleed out on the streets of Dodge City, you don't exactly have a lot of uh, warm feelings towards him. All right. Take it. In the interest of keeping the peace, I should not say this next thing. But all things considered, I'm going to pass along a piece of information with a warning. I don't want to see any of these stray bullets finding any other mark. You hear? I hear. All right. I haven't heard any tale of John Wesley Harden kicking around in Missoula. But there is a man named Harden who lives here. 
runs a uh, the pork butchery here. Hardened butchers. He's run for mayor twice. I mean, he's run for he's run for my job twice. Lost both elections. Word is he's looking to run for mayor next. Might win. You know if his roots run back to Texas? Well, uh, yeah, I believe so. He's got family from there. That's how he came uh, came up here as part of the cattle drives and um, settled down, tried to make a name for himself here. Pretty well to do. He's in tight with the Montana Association of Ranchers, uh, which is a uh, uh, are problem of their own, which uh, you did not make any easier with the killing of Bodhi. So chances are he's not going to have a very high opinion of me when I walk into his butcher shop. Well, I don't know if he knows who you are just yet. Yet, but... It's a warning. Uh, he is a well-placed individual in the community. Sheriff, I feel I should tell you something. I think uh, a lot of people around here have got me wrong. Okay. After what I did the first night I was here, I think a lot of people are liable to think I'm the kind of person looking for an excuse to throw down. Fact of the matter is, that ain't it at all. If I could put both of those guns in a drawer and just live my life peacefully somewhere, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Fact of the matter is, though, trouble always seems to find me. And I'm not the kind of man who's going to wait to be drawn on before I've got both my hands filled. All right. Well, just a bit of advice. That's all. I will say that a man who says trouble just seems to find him tends to ignore his part in that. Hell, you may be right, Sheriff. You may be right. Get some sleep. Will do. Will do. And we jump forward back to where we ended last week's episode in the afternoon with the sheriff deciding that you've spent enough time in jail and your friends have come by anyway to pick you up. He unlocks a cell and he says, all right, so... Don't go disturbing the peace no, uh, no more, and we should be fine. Otherwise, I can make that cell even more uncomfortable. I'll try to behave myself from here on out. And uh, Amy and uh, Jim are here to collect you. Bob Morrow has... Uh, gone back to um, uh, rest and recuperate from all that, the ticks that had been crawling around in his body. He's taken a little bit of a, uh, a, a personal day. Uh, so as you step out onto the, the streets of Missoula, uh, you can see a, a look of concern on both Amy and, uh, and uh, Jim's face. Amy, I must say, your ability to cheat death is astounding. I, uh, I do what I can. How's your, uh, how are your accommodations? Oh, the sheriff is a nice enough fella. Saving his life probably helped a little bit. He even gave me a helpful piece of information. There's a man I want to visit in town when we get the chance. 
Need to go by the butcher shop. Butcher shop, is that uh, code for something? Or you just want a nice steak? I'll take a steak, but I'm more in the market for some information. Apparently the uh, the butcher in this town is a to-do member of the society and, well, knows someone that I'm looking for. Oh, all right, so, you know, business visit. Yes. Always with the roundabout uh, words. <laughs> I found that with the kind of life that I've led, if I go to shooting my mouth off about the people I've run into and pissed off, most people are liable to laugh at me. Yeah, I mean, we've been uh, been together a bit. You can just say you're looking for a man to kill. Reckon we've all been there once or twice. Seven or eight times. <laughs> GM, Marshall, uh, we went and talked to the mayor as well. Yes. And was that prior to picking up Clayton? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. As well. Okay. Yeah, we we ended last week, or last game with you guys, with Clayton getting let out of jail. Okay. And that's where, basically where we're picking up right now. Right. Uh, so, uh, you were asked by the sheriff to look into, quietly, um, possible uh, reasons for Morgan Bennett's Mm -hmm. uh, suicide, uh, which the sheriff himself finds mighty suspicious, but doesn't want to arouse any any, um, interest in the the matter further or until... By looking into it himself, it says it will uh, attract too much of attention. If as long as the people think that everyone in town thinks it was a suicide, they might be a little easier to find. Right. If the sheriff yeah. starts goes asking around about it, then who knows what's going to happen? Well, Clayton, uh, as you had your moment uh, to yourself gentleman we ran into yesterday uh, or, or the day before uh, and that those ticks uh, really got to me I don't even know which day it is, but, uh, <laughs> anyway found him strung up out at the uh, at the festival grounds um, Gemini actually uh, went back with this fellow and um, his brother is pretty, as you can imagine, pretty uh, beat up about it. And uh, whole town is just uh, pretty put off by by him being the type to do this. So apparently, there was some other young man too uh, that that went this same way, uh, did some odds and ends volunteered around doing, you know, handy work for people. A man he, named uh, Russell. Yes, Russell also killed himself. Uh, had had some kind of, you know, work relationship with Bennett, but not close, nothing remarkable. Interesting. Interesting. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. So, with that in mind, uh, what are your character's intentions for the next? Let's see. It's about middle of the day. You have about uh, four or five hours before uh, dinner. Uh, what did you guys want to do? I think Jem would want to go to uh, check out um, where the body was found. Like if it's at his house or somewhere in the store. Just kind of see if there's any indication that there was a problem you want to go see, you want to go check out where whose body was found where they where morgan's body was found okay well actually that's really close uh, from the sheriff's office it's basically across the street because uh, you could see sheriff's office and the mayor's office right next to each other and the mayor mm-hmm. could see the fairgrounds b- being built from hit from the window in in the the mayor's office so you don't have very far okay. to go at all for that 
Awesome. Um, gonna an idea for what the other two of you might be wanting to do in this eve before the uh, before nightfall. I'm gonna want to go to the butcher shop at some point. Uh, okay. But I I'll be happy to accompany anyone uh, to examine anything or ask any questions or anything like that. All right. All right. Did we know where Russell was found? Uh, you do not. Okay. Uh, you just heard that he was uh, in a similar way, but that's then, maybe something you can find out by asking yeah. around. Yeah. So definitely, as Jem said, uh, head to uh, the site of, of Morgan Morgan's death. Check that out. And then, um, you know, maybe try and start putting some pieces together of the puzzle with uh, his connections with Russell. See, uh, okay. yeah, see what we can All find. Right. So here, for your information, and for everybody at home, is the way I like to run an investigation. I very am a, I'm very opposed to uh, skill checks being needed to find clues, um, because then when everybody fails a skill check and you don't find that one clue and the investigation grinds to a halt kind of thing. So all I expect when you're looking for that sort of stuff is um, that you use your, some of your common sense and you tell me what it is you're looking for and what skills you want to use. And if you're in the right place to find a clue, you will find that clue. Um, and all you have to do is make sure you're doing the right sort of looking around. But I still call for a skill check and, been, and you may ask, well, what's the point of the skill check if I'm always going to find the clue? Because the skill is not about whether or not you find the clue. It's about how subtle you are finding clues. Um, if you if you go to a, a place and you um, you get a raise on the skill check that you that I ask you for, you are as subtle as the wind. No one will remember that you uh, the questions you asked or will have any memory of you uh, poking your nose around a location. If you succeed with just a success you are vaguely remembered if somebody else comes asking about you. If you succeed, if you fail at your investigation role, um, you're poking, you're nosing around or your questions are obvious and remembered. And you might suffer some form of minor blowback from that. Um, and if you critically fail on when, when investigating something, the villain of whatever story that you, you're currently on, on the trail of will know about it. You will have alerted the bad people uh, to your investigation and your name will be at the top of their list. I like it. All right. So. <laughs> so you head on over to where Bennick's work where Bennett was found, uh, it's the middle of the day. You can hear the hammering and the construction uh, uh, has uh, picked up again uh, because uh, they're still trying to get the the place uh, up and running. So, as you approach, what is you? Um, what do you ask? Uh, you see a bunch of guys um, working on you know the yeah. You know, on the construction, they're assembling the, the bleachers. You can hear hammering in the distance. Uh, you can, uh, let's see. I have a, my little, uh, Is there any, any, you know, kind of, you know, police caution tape, if you will. Uh, <laughs> it, nothing like that. Uh, n no, no, it doesn't look like that. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of people working. Uh, you'll have to probably ask around okay. about yeah. They went right back to work thing. and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, but you can, um, yeah. The, so tell me what you guys want to use to, to do that. You want to do some intimidation or persuasion and talk to these people, or you want to look around with maybe a notice roll, see what you can find that sort of thing. I will, um, I'll go up to some of the workers and uh, just kind of give a nod. 
uh, as an introduction. So, excuse, excuse me, gentlemen. Um, uh, Guys are picking up crates and and moving them around, or, or you know, you see carrying two by fours and hammering and stuff like that. They they kind of look at each other when you when you come up and like, y- y- yeah. Uh, p- pardon my interruption. I know you have uh, much work here in front of you, but um, as uh, I'm sure you're well aware, uh, we lost uh, Mr. Bennett uh, the other night, and uh, I'm just here to uh, see if there's any uh, see if loss of some personal effects of his, um, and uh, we're hoping to gather those. Uh, it- see if they were here, left behind, and and gather those. You know, for for those. Uh, family members that he's uh oh he's left oh well okay uh give me a, a persuasion roll and i i guess i'll tag on to that if needed for clarification um could you kind of help me uh point out where he last was so uh, where he might last been to see if those are right. yeah persuasion coming up I'll take it. All right, that is the race. Okay. They have, uh, yeah. It, it should should someone come asking, they will have no memory of this conversation. Um, it'll be, or or they just they they they're not really paying that much attention to you. You know, they're not they, they don't find you suspicious in any way, so they don't like focus in and um and kind of remember what you or any of you look like. They kind of gesture over to um to a spot at the bleach uh, between the bleachers where there's sort of a cross beam kind of like kind of goes up and over and you, um, you can see that a rope is laying scattered on the ground nearby in that spot. And you can see a couple of rope marks up there on the beam, essentially. Um, and they kind of like, they, they, you see them all kind of gesture off, but they don't, Ever, none of them seem to want to look in that direction as they point off in there. I think it's right over there. I appreciate um, your time. Yep, yeah, no problem. Let you get back to it. Thank you. And they and they go back to work. Uh, and as you uh, so yeah so you now you you know for sure the location. Uh, what do you do? Just kind of wander them? over there. Uh, you know, looking at the other two to uh, that we know kind of where we're going, and and I just uh, I'll initially just kind of take in the area and uh, look around at at uh, what's before us. Okay, give me a, uh, who would can like I, to give me an? I'm sorry. Can I use my survival to see if I can tell if there was like a sign of a struggle or if there's like more than one set of footprints? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Give me uh. Give me that survival. Nice. Seven. All right. Okay. So, you start like poking around in the dirt, and you kind of you you make a little bit of a scene. A couple of people. You you notice a couple of people kind of looking over in your direction as you're doing so, but they they quickly go back to whatever it is. They were working on. Um, you can. There, I it's kind of. Hmm? Can I can I use a group plus one so that I can give that a raise, bump it up a little bit? Uh, you yeah, I got no problem with you soaking those up now. Uh, I'm not sure what we're sitting on at the moment. <laughs> let me just, let's double check. Uh, here it's like four uh, of them, I think. The red yeah. ones, I believe. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Where is it? Oh, party resources. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if these were updated since last time. Yeah, but no, yeah, okay, yeah, we got four. Okay, cool. Yeah, so knock one of those off. And uh, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, we'll give you a plus one to that. And uh, you you start looking around in the foot at the footprints, and the and the crew pays no attention to you. Um. It is a bit hard because of all the traffic that's been going through here in th- this morning. But um, you do you do spot a couple of things. Um, kicked off to one side, 
kind of half under the bleachers. What looks like a, a discarded tool belt. Um, and near it, a claw hammer. Um, you pick it up, and, you, and as you're looking at it, um, you can see that there is a, a bit of burlap caught in the claw portion of the hammer. And beside all of this, there are drag marks, drag marks in the dirt. Over by the center of the, the crossbeam, um, any such sort of things are kind of like obscured by all the footprints that have gone back and forth. But you get the you get a real sense that two somebody was dragged, um, somebody's boots were dragged through the dirt, uh, kicking and and catching uh, right over by this part. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, it does not seem like it does seem like there was some sort of struggle that happened. Okay. But all the evidence is kind of like off to the side here, by the ble by the edge of the bleachers. So I, I look at my, my comrades and I download them on all that information. Um, and I show them like the claw hammer with the burlap. And then I pocket that to bring back okay. to the sheriff to talk to them. Pocket about. the burlap or the, or the hammer or both. Okay. Yeah. I just toss them in my backpack. Is that, uh, that piece of fabric large enough for make any recognition out of that Jim? Not right now, but who knows what we'll find when we go investigate the Russell boy. I'm not convinced. I, I see a lot of drag marks. Um, something tells me that uh, somebody was pulled over here to their death. Doesn't look like a man who went willingly. All right. So, feeling like you've kind of um, assessed what you could um, uncover here, at least um, in the in the dirt. Uh, the, you could try and pr pry some more information out of the workers or go hit the saloons to ask around or the local shops, see if, what other people might know about the situation. It's the two things that you don't really, you haven't really looked into just yet. I have uh, one more thing to to uh, on the way out, if unless sure. uh, others have anything, but I would have something on the way out. Okay. I'd want to look around and see if anybody looked squirrely. Like, does anybody look disturbed by our presence there? Uh, well, so far, uh, nobody's taken taken any notice of you. Actually, you've you've aced all your investigation roles. Nobody seems that squirrely. Okay. Uh, th they all seem a little weird and kind of like um, distracted as yeah, because but they've of Morgan's lost death. Their foreman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, in addition to uh, going to the local saloons and asking around, talking to the local townspeople, uh, just to throw things out there, you can try and take a look at or find Morgan's body. Yeah, throwing, throwing it out there as suggestions. Is or, that missing? Do we know if that's missing, or is it just it's no. been taken somewhere? Okay. Oh, it's just not here. You just yeah, don't know where. Yeah. You, as a people, don't know where it is right now. Right. Um. Uh. You did hear the sheriff mention an undertaker. Um. Uh. You also. Um. And that yeah, I'm not sure what else uh, I, I'm going to throw out to you necessarily. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds like I think we're wrapped up otherwise, and I'll head out uh, as we head out, kind of run by, um, you know, maybe try and find some other workers, uh, if not the same ones, and uh, just um, actually, no, I will try and seek out the original workers, and uh, once again, okay. sorry for the uh, second interruption, gentlemen, I appreciate uh, your help, though, we, we did uh, kind of recover some items here of, of Mr. Bennett, uh, just some tools. But uh, good to have uh, those those uh, those pieces. Um, All right. You guys got quite uh, quite a project before you. You you work around the clock or call it uh, call it a day around supper time. Oh no, no yeah. definitely call it around supper time. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck to you. All right. 
All right. And uh, head off. So knowing that uh, there's no one working a long shift, carry on. Okay. Where do you guys mm -hmm. head after that? What places, uh, and, and mostly what I'd be looking for are saloons or places that would be very popular in the evening. Uh, yeah. What are closest to this particular site that we're at? Well, from what you under, from what you understand, um, most of the saloons, if not all, uh, you you, you um, are on Front Street. Uh, you've heard that there's a couple saloon hotels uh, uh, that aren't on Front Street, um, but they're like quite a ways away over by the railroad. Um, and those are frequented by Iron Dragon and, um, and, and and those folks that run the railroad or by basically people who are, for one reason or another, you know, want to be uh, near the railroad because they're, they're stopping over for uh, on a trip or something like that. <laughs> most of the places are, so that means most of the places are about two blocks uh, over from here on Front Street and... Uh, uh, about to uh, call off the map here, actually. Um, and uh, most of those places are on the uh, the. See, I'm trying to see. Um, I think I called it the southern uh, side of the, but I'm going to call it the western side of them uh, of town here for now. So once I have everybody up, all right. So where the green pin is is placed on that map that is the fairgrounds where morgan was found and where you guys are currently um down over here uh where the red pin is right now that is del monaco hotel basically where you guys have been shacked up that whole block that whole line of buildings there's in that line of buildings uh about half of them are saloons of one type or another and it, it seems like that is the approved place for uh, rowdy saloons and uh to exist there are a few other hotels which are not there and they're allowed to serve alcohol at the hotels but if you want to just a straight up saloon they're going to be on that block right there okay yeah i mostly want to see uh like who who would which places around this work site would be most populated at night? Basically, who potentially could have seen what happened out here? Okay, well, that being said, right here, um, uh, next uh, near the near the um, oh, sorry, no, not there, here, um. That is the Occidental Hotel, which has a bar in it. Okay. It is Kitty Corner from the fairgrounds. And so if um, they would have the most clear line of sight from the fairgrounds and might be the place that the ran that the workers would go to being really short distance walk when they get off. So. So either if they were looking for a wild time, they'd head down to Front Street. If they were looking for a quiet drink or something like that they probably head into the occidental okay so yeah i'll i'll look over at everyone and go should we see if anyone was over at the occidental see if anyone over there saw anything reckon that'd be smart all right so you head on over there next the occidental is uh more of a hotel and then a saloon necessarily, but it has a fairly large um, saloon area, drinking area when you and it's that serves kind of like right up front when you when you show up uh, it is you would you otherwise consider a very classic uh, uh, depiction of a of a saloon with a got a couple of card tables set up uh, as you walk in the place um, there's a piano that being played off in one corner. And uh, there's a handful of people in here in the middle of the day. Um, probably maybe more than you expected, but um, yeah. You know, considering um, the time period. So I'm... 
I'm either going to go up to the desk clerk or the barkeep. Same um, person. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right, so, so I'll go up to the barkeep since there are people kind of moving in and about, and I'll go, uh, excuse me a minute. Uh, ah. Can uh, can you tell me who all was here last night that might still be here today? Were, were you here last night? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here most nights. Throws a, he's wiping down the bar and throws it over his shoulder. He says, um... What, uh, uh, yeah, let's see, um, who else was here? Uh, Benjamin and, and, uh, Thomas, I think they were here last night. Gotcha. Thomas, you were here last night, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, there's a mumble from the table over there. Two guys are, they're playing cards and they do not want to be interrupted. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can get in on their game here in just a little bit, but uh, if you don't mind, I, I have a couple questions for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, are uh, you aware of the uh, the rather unpleasant business that happened across the street last night? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of hard to miss. Uh, you you didn't happen to to see anything, did you? Or hear anything? What uh, see or what do you mean? Well, uh, the circumstances of uh, the late Mister Morgan's death were, uh, uh, well, hardly accidental in our opinions. It it just doesn't seem to add up. Did you see or potentially hear anyone who maybe shouldn't have been around there the other night? And I'll use oh. uh, persuasion as I'm asking yeah. this question. All right. I was about to call for it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So give me a, uh, a persuasion roll. All righty. All right. So that is a success. Um, he goes, well, you know, I didn't see anybody, but I do recall one of the saloon girls here, uh, Betty. She said that she was spooked a bit last night. Um, said that uh, she thought that someone had been uh, kind of like watching from outside, gave her the creeps, and so she stayed extra later than normal so that she could be walked home. And uh, about what time does Miss Betty get here? Oh, uh, I wouldn't expect her here till this evening. Uh, it's usually not much call for a dance, for, for dancing uh, in the afternoon. Right. And right. Uh, what, what, about, what about Betty's uh, situation there? Who walked her home last night? Oh, that would be me. Oh, all right, all right. All right, sir. A gentleman. you cross paths with anybody on your way back? No, can't say that I did. You didn't see anything uh, on your way out that she seemed to be alarmed to. Uh, I did not see the feller of which she was speaking of. But, you know, uh, I was busy. I was running the bar the whole time, the whole night. And, you know, it's not the, you know, it's not the first time that uh, the girls that work here get a little bit of extra attention than what they call than what they want from the from the patrons normally they know not to harass the ladies but uh you know some people you know hang around want to have uh uh try and get some extra time with them or something and you know girl needs a uh ask a girl who stays late asks for a little extra um, security heading home i got no problem with that comes with a job very kind of you. Well, you know, uh, otherwise, you know, they'll run off to some other town where they ain't being taken care of. Where I mean, where they will be taken care of. They ain't being taken care of here, and I try and run a nice place. Very commendable. Now, those fellas over at the card table, were they doing much the same thing last night, or uh, were they in the mood for a different kind of entertainment? 
Uh, no, no. Ben and Tom, they're uh, consummate uh, gamblers. Uh, they're always looking to pick up a game from somebody. It's how they pay their bills. Oh. They typically run a clean game, or uh, have there been issues with them? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I mean, they, they're, they run a fair game. Yeah. As far as I know, uh, I haven't heard any real vocal complaints from anybody. I mean, it's just, it's not, they're not big stake players or anything, you know, you want, you want to go over to Diamond Dave's for something like if you want looking for a, a fancy game. Understood. Mostly, they're just playing for bar tabs. Well, uh, I I didn't catch your name when I came in. What, what what's your what's your name there? Oh, well, my name is uh, Joseph. Oh. How do you do? Play McTaggart. Nice to make your acquaintance. Well met, Mister McTaggart. Can I offer you a drink? I'll take a shot of whiskey. All right. Gets out a bottle, pours it for you. I tap on the bar to indicate I'd like one as well. Or is one for you? I'm uh, getting over something. Uh, I'm good, but appreciate well, it. Well, you know, same. if you need something to get, uh, help you get over someone, uh, carry a whole selection here. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, yeah. I'm good. Appreciate it, Joseph. Yeah, all right. He goes back to polishing the bar, to waxing the bar top. And uh, you guys uh, uh, going to do any more other asking around? I'll, I'll look over it at Jim and say, I I'm not much of a hand at cards. How do you do typically? I, uh, I reckon I could swing some go fish or uh, old maid. <laughs> Um, might have a hand at uh, blackjack once in a while. Amy, how do you typically play these days? Uh, typically don't. But, uh, <laughs> my playing's gonna be, uh, you know, my old six string. I put my shot glass down on the bar and go, ah, hell, I'll do it. And I turn around and walk over to the table that Tom and Benjamin are playing at. All right. Do I need to hold your guns? No, no probably. Don't worry. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Thanks for taking one for the team, Clay. All right. I won't leave you hanging though. I'll come. I'll come along. Appreciate it. And so I, right. I tell I Joseph up. we're gonna need another round. <laughs> Coming right up. So, um, gambling's really easy and simple. Uh, when you get a, a group of people sitting down at the table, uh, there's a basic buy-in. We'll say five dollars. Okay. Right. Everybody's going to make it uh, over the course of half an hour That's playing the game. Time. Well, um, over the course of uh, the uh, over the course of an hour of play, it's going to be about five bucks, right? Uh, and uh, everyone who is participating makes a gambling roll. The person who rolls the highest wins that five dollars, um, or, or basically wins the equivalent of that five dollars. Person who score uh, rolls the lowest loses five dollars, and everybody else breaks even. Um, but what do you guys, how you guys are kind of using this as a way to sort of ask questions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll walk up and, uh, say, uh, how you doing fellas? What's your game? Oh, um, uh, poker. Yeah. Uh, you, you're looking to sit in. Could yeah, always we, use. Uh, playing draw or stud. Uh, well, uh, draw, actually. Oh, 
All right. Well, Joseph at the bar says, uh, you two a uh, pretty good pair at taking other people's money and uh, we're feeling a bit charitable. Ah, oh, all right. Well, I'd be happy to oblige you. <laughs> Deal them in. Deal them in, Tom. Name's Amy, oh. by the way. Hello, uh, my name's... Uh, uh, I forgot my name. Uh, <laughs> ben or Tom? Ben! My name's Ben! That's right, and that's Tom. He's done dealing. Uh, Did you lose your name in the last hand? Uh, yeah, I lost a lot of things. Uh, but, you know, things are looking bright. Now that we got uh, a few extra hand, uh, people in here to soak up all the bad cards. And uh, I'm Clay, by the way. Hello, Clay. What is uh, uh, uh Jim? Are, are you sitting at the table? Or are you joining in? Or I'm just kind of standing behind the guys, like I'm watching and I'm drinking silently, and I'm done, I don't really behind, have much to say. Standing behind your guys, uh, your 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 buddies, because if you go standing behind the other guys, they they get a little nervous about that. Oh no, no, I'm standing <laughs> behind my guys, okay. not those All right. guys. All right. <laughs> Probably behind, uh, like right, like probably right next to Amy, and I'm just sort of silently uh, drinking my whiskey and just kind of like watching the guys, seeing how they respond to my my people. Okay. Jim, if I see you making any hand signals towards those fellas, I'm gonna take it mighty personal. <laughs> Listen, I got a lot of riding on you, buddy. Don't you worry about me. So, um, what subjects do you bring up as you're playing? Uh, poker with these guys. Uh, uh, Joseph at the bar there says he, uh, you f fellas are in here uh, quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, uh, best tables that, uh, uh, you know, I, I think this is the best table in the uh, in town. Uh, so a lot of other folk like, you know, going down to first uh, front street, but I think it gets a little too wild down there at night i like a nice quiet game where you can just play cards and not get in the middle of a fight sure the, well, uh, i know it sure the hotel folk are, are nice uh for those that uh join you this is nice variety for your games as opposed to a locals oh yeah that's that's a, that's another upside is you get to meet a lot of new people when you're saying it when you're when you're playing at a hotel the saloon you, you got to get people to come there specifically either to drink or to gamble here you get some people that are like maybe uh a little bit more um new at it that's always a good thing yeah we're we're uh you know to be honest a little new to town ourselves recently uh well yeah well, i could say I, visit, I should say didn't think you looked all that familiar no what uh you get uh had any uh curious or, or uh, interesting folks you've ran into in the past night or two um they they're they're playing cards this is this is happening over a course of time as you know um there's a there's occasionally when you broach these the, these questions a lot of like well are you here to play cards or are you here to make conversation a um, couple here so you got to space out a lot of the questions as you're doing it but you get the general idea that they don't uh, know anything. Of, they haven't seen any real strange people here the past couple of nights. All just standard hotelers, hotel goers, yeah. either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's get. Let's uh, take that gambling roll first uh, right now, and then we'll get back to the the rest of it. Okay. Oh. Well, this is a, this is going to be basically an hour's worth. Uh, okay, so oh. Clayton. Oh, hey, there you go. Nice. Okay. Here Clayton rolls a, rolls a five. Uh, Amy oh, yeah. rolls oh, a yeah. nice. Keep oh, going. oh, Keep nice. Going. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Nineteen. All right, so let's check on uh, Bob. Who uh, I'm just going to give him a straight up uh, six roll. He rolls a two. Uh, and, uh, and Tom, who's, uh, been dealing, he's a little, he's a, he's a little bit better at this. 
He's rolling a D8. Uh, he rolls a four. Still not good enough to um, to beat that 19. So um, uh, in the end, in his luck, I guess. In the end, Amy, you you pull, you make that five bucks. Uh, Clayton, you break even. And poor old Ben, he he loses out, and he's just like, oh, you know, I thought this was going to be my day. He ends up paying the bill for everybody. He's like, but uh, the round. Um, this has been about you spent about an hour here asking around. Was there any other subjects you bring up in that over the course of that hour? Yeah, I think we want to ask him about, you know, if they saw anything, um, you know, saw or heard anything as well, right? Yeah, and Maybe I also ask want... if anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I also want to know if uh, if Morgan ever played at their table. Okay. I'd like to know if anybody came home a little late last night, like if anybody showed up at the table later than is normal. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So, um, as you guys, are, this is going to be still be persuasion rolls. Just trying to find ways during the the game to just slide these questions in unnoticed, basically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So uh, both of you guys give me persuasion rolls. Like I said, we're, I'm not looking for. Uh, I'm not hiding any information from you. I am just uh, looking to see how much of a ruckus you you make while bringing up these the, these fine questions. So, um, Jim, uh, Jim, you rolled a four, which is a success, which means uh, they'll remember this conversation. Clayton, are you happy with a three? Um, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna re-roll. I'm gonna spend one of my one. pennies to uh, to re-roll. Mm -hmm. You could take a plus one from the okay. No, that's even oh. better. Way better. Good choice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so seventeen. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they completely don't even notice it. So to reiterate, what was your question roughly about there? Um, uh, what what's Morgan's uh, full name? Morgan. Morgan Bannon. Bannon. Morgan Bannon. Bannon. It was he, you asked if he ever came in and played at the table, right? Yeah. Fellow by the name of Morgan Bennett ever play cards with y'all? Yeah. And you find a way to bring up the name. Uh, you actually you find a way to like wait till Morgan there the, until someone starts talking about Morgan Bennett. And then you then you quietly ask, oh, uh, you knew him. huh? Did he ever play at your table kind of thing? It was very subtle, uh, completely. And it doesn't feel like in any way like you brought up the subject uh, as you're asking the question. Uh, and you find out that, no, I mean, Morgan was. Uh, Nice feller and stuff, but he didn't uh, come in here necessarily uh, all that much. Um, when uh, when when the workers would get off, they'd all f come over here. But Morgan Tennant had other business to take care of. His him and his brother run the hardware shop, so he would actually usually have to go back and check on his brother and help close up the shop at the end of the day while they've been working on that that sort of stuff. So he didn't spend a whole lot of time after hours here or uh, that, you know, that they know of. Um, and then, Jim, you asked about other people. Like if they if they had been down late, because like that, that guy goes and walks the girl home, he walks Betty home. But uh -huh. I was wondering, did anybody come in? Did they see anybody like come in like later than normal? Because usually people are oh, you know, right for yeah, the yeah. night or whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, no, they um, they don't recall anything like that. Uh, okay. They, but he goes, they do recall you know, saying you you jump in on that moment when they're talking about Morgan, right? And mm -hmm. and the guy goes, no, you know what? Hang on. Well, no, that wasn't it wasn't late. That was that was. You remember you uh, asking about folk not from around here mm -hmm. I seem to recall a few days ago feller came in looking for Morgan you, rem you remember that Tom real strange 
Gave everyone the willies. I don't recall if he let uh, offered a name. He came in looking for uh, for for Morgan. Oh, yeah. I can't. Sorry, you I can't remember what he might look like. Oh, uh, tall and thin feller, real sunken look. Nice suit, but sort of worn out. Uh, I know that he was, uh, he was trouble. That's for sure. He had a gun belt. Wore it real low, you know, like, like a gunslinger. And mm. he was liquored up something awful. He didn't act drunk, but you could smell it on him. Do y'all see where he went when he when he decided to left when he decided to leave? Did he not get what he was looking for? No, I mean he came in here uh, asking questions about Morgan. Um, we we explained that he doesn't usually hang out here so much. That you know, like I like we said to you that he goes helps his brother after the if the place shuts down, generally. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking? I look at. Oh, just uh, just curious. Uh, Morgan and I knew each other when we was chilling, and thought I would uh, just look in on him. And I look over at uh, at Amy and um, Clayton. Like you're able to hear this too, but like I kind of look over at Amy and go, you know, we should uh, we should pay uh, the remaining Bennett brother our respects once more, t just to you know, just to let him know that we're really feeling for him. Maybe take a look around, see if we can uh, check his wares. Yes, indeed. I think so. Gentlemen, it was uh, mighty fun. I... Yeah, hell. And I'll, I'll take my winnings and slide them back across the table. Say, uh, get a round or two on me. Uh, the company was well worth uh, the buy-in. <laughs> well, you're welcome back here at this table anytime, sir. No, hey, uh, hey, Joe. Um, another round. <laughs> immediately, they, 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 it, the, the money spent, the money given is immediately spent again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, and with that, you head out back into the street. Spend a get a, so you spend about an hour, or, or in here, or an hour and a half. And as you head back out onto the street, you uh, you get about two more, two three hours before nightfall. Uh, where in town is the butcher shop? Uh, look, let's see. Um, you ask around, mm -hmm. assuming before you, before, before you leave. Yeah. Uh, you're told that it is also down on Front Street. In fact, it is this long, large, long building here on Front Street. Um, about close to the far end of the other from from the Delmonico. Okay. Uh, the one marked with the red pen on the map. Where's yeah, the uh, hardware store again? On the other side of the. Uh, the hardware store is over. Uh, the Bennett right Brothers uh, is right. Is this is yeah right? Yep. Over here. Okay. All right. So everything we we are looking for is over on Front Street. For the most part. Okay. I mean, not everything. I mean, the uh, if you, I will give this to you guys without some basic thought that um, if you don't know where the Undertaker is necessarily, and you don't know if Morgan's even there, uh, you do know that if uh, there's a morgue anywhere in town, it's probably at the um, the Sisters of Providence Hospital, which is you know way over here somewhere uh on the uh on spruce street which i can't there we go hanging the mm -hmm. table uh so but yeah the the as far as the the bennett brothers place and uh the um harden butchery um it's right there on front street gotcha so as we're headed towards Front Street, I'll tell them uh, while y'all go pay respects at the Bennett's Hardware store, I'm gonna 
go down the street and uh, talk to the butcher. Really after that uh, slab of pork, eh? I want to slab something. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of look at his face, and uh, and his his like body language, and go, uh, "You sure you don't need an extra pair of hands, there, man?" If you want to watch over to me to make sure that I don't hurt someone, then you're welcome to come. But I promise you, my quarrel is not with the butcher; it's with his kin. Amy, I, I I gotta tell you, man. Um, we gotta make sure we tread lightly with the law, keep him on our side. Do you think we should just uh, head on over with Clay, make sure he uh, doesn't get too hot headed? God forbid this man don't tell him what he want to know. Marshall, do we know about what time the hardware store would close up so that we can uh, well, both? Uh, uh, what well, hardware you got, store for sure. You got from the conversation in the Occidental that. Um, basically, they'd stop working on the on the stands right around the time it started to get a little too dark to see. Mm -hmm. Folks would go filtering into the Occidental to, for drinks. Morgan would head back to the shop to help his brother close up. Close up, okay. So, um, got the impression that that means that the hardware store probably closes up right around sundown. And how many? How long is that until then? Currently, about three hours. Okay. Clayton, you uh, you be in and out of that uh, butcher shop. Uh, oh, actually, well, I'm gonna stop that there because last week, or last time we ran this, uh, we had a we had a game. Um, it was earlier earlier today, and he closed up early. That's so right. it is it is closed at the moment. Okay, nope, that's uh... you know, uh, Jim, I what was his brother's name again? Uh, Earl. 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 Yeah. Earl Bennett. Earl, given, uh, you know, situation uh, closed up, so he might uh, not even be around. Um, what, uh, you after something specific talking to him again? Wasn't really talking to him, more just wanted to take a look around the shop, see if, uh, see if there were any clues there. I mean, I wouldn't mind asking him if, uh, Anybody came to the shop looking for uh, Morgan that matched that same description? Yeah, definitely. So, give well, you guys, I'm going to have you guys give me a notice roll as you're walking down uh, Higgins Street back towards the front. Right, I'm figuring you're heading heading that way, right? All right. So, um, Jim. Uh, with your seven, you take notice of um, uh, just uh, as you, you're stepping out on the uh, outside of the Occidental and about two buildings down. Uh, you uh, uh, from on Main Street from the, uh, from the Occidental is the Missoula Pioneer, uh, the local newspaper office. And it just it sticks in your head. The thought that, well, if you want to know a little bit more about local events, you might be able to dig through their their collection. Okay. Just throwing it out there. Awesome. Clay Clayton, I think you're uh whether you want it or not, you're you're gonna have uh some company there to go get your meats as I think our our hardware shop is closed up for the day, so Fair enough. Jim, you uh, look a little distracted. I'm just uh, hoping that we don't have to get into any crazy hijinks with uh, our good friend here. And uh, hoping that nobody else uh, finds it in their hearts that they need to leave this earth between tonight and tomorrow. I'm not going to shoot anyone if I don't have to. All right, so uh, then it's agreed that you're all heading on over to the um, the Harton uh, meets, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so you 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 make your way down there. Um, and uh, the front the front half of the place is basically uh, 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 just like a, a butchery, a butcher's shop where you can you can get cuts that are uh, uh, wrapped up for you. And uh, you you're not sure if they're doing a whole lot of the the butchering here. It seems like a strange place right here in the middle of town for that sort of thing. But uh, when you when you uh, pop in there, wh what do you ask for exactly? Uh, so I kind of look around a little bit. Uh, I, I go up to the, the counter and I say, uh, howdy there. Uh, I'm uh, in the market for a little bit of bacon for uh, when I leave town. And uh, do, do you know if the proprietor is in? Uh. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, I don't. Uh, the proprietor? You mean the the owner? Absolutely. He does not seem. He does not seem to be that smart of a, of a person. Uh, uh, he goes. No, no. I, um, Mr. Harden is uh doesn't doesn't usually come in and get his hands dirty. Uh, he, he he's a uh, he's um. Do you want to talk to the the man who? runs the place the head butcher or uh, maybe well I, I'd like to talk to Mr. Harden but I, I, I'll speak to your head butcher maybe oh. he can uh, tell me a little bit more about where I can find Mr. Harden okay alright I mean uh, and then he sees the, the other people you know who came in with you or like um, I just need to see if these people need anything you bacon for you and he looks at uh amy and uh gem to see if you have any orders before he ducks out to get it oh we're uh we're tagging along with this fella here so just uh, oh. put, a, right. put a couple uh extra slabs of bacon on his tab for the rest of us <laughs> all right yep. Oh, okay. All right. He pops out in the back and um, he comes back and um, and uh, says, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Albert will be out here in a second with uh, uh, he's the he's my boss. Uh, and um, he, he's basically wrapping up some bacon and some brown paper and kind of and weighing it out so you can see how much. Uh, and be sure of how much you're gonna get. Two pounds, son about good. Two yep. pounds of bacon. Yeah. All right. Um, a man comes out, kind of broad-shouldered, wearing a vaguely pink-stained apron. Um. Uh, so it's 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 regularly washed, but it doesn't really not in a way that actually is getting rid of the the stains. Uh, he introduces Lots him in 1884, eh? Exactly. <laughs> uh, he comes out and he goes, Hi, uh, I'm I'm Miss I'm Albert. So you're uh, you want to meet Mr. Harden? I certainly do. Well, um, is this in regards to a particularly large order or something? Well, I, I, I guess you could say that. Uh, I've been pointed in his direction uh, by one of his kinfolk, a, another butcher by the name of Harden. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um, well, uh, give me a persuasion roll. Uh, I am definitely gonna spend a Benny on that one. Okay. Uh, again, this is uh, this is just gathering of basic information. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Oh, all right. So with that raise, um, guy doesn't really think much about it. Al Albert doesn't like like seem to find your request in any way suspicious. And he goes, "Oh yeah, well you know, uh, Mister Harden, you can usually find him either." Uh, over at the Windsor Hotel. Uh, 
um, if he's uh, entertaining company or at his house. Um, his house is the, uh, the big one uh, on... And he gives you a direction for it. It's uh, the big one on uh, Cedar and, uh, and Washington. And uh, do, do you know which uh, locale he'll be more likely to uh, to be attending this evening? Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with his entertaining. So um, if he's if he's. He'll be either be at home or if he's, you know, looking for cigars and brandy, he'll be at the window. All righty. Thank you so much for. Uh... Your, uh, your time today, Albert. No problem. And, uh, thank you for your patronage. You can give us a big grin. No problem at all. And he ducks back. And there's a, these are these times when the doors are open and just for a brief moment and they swing open and close, you're like, oh, I kind of didn't want to see back there. <laughs> Uh, and with that, assuming uh, uh, nothing else happens or no further questions, you're back out on the street now with uh, two pounds of bacon wrapped up in some uh, brown paper. Yep. Where to next? So before we uh, leave, can I ask him for directions to the coroner's office? He says, uh, yeah, he goes, I don't, yeah, uh, I don't think we got one. Uh, you mean like the Undertaker? Under yeah, yeah, man, an Undertaker. That's, uh, yeah, that's about, that's about right. You know, oh, just another yeah. type of butcher. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tells you where the where you can uh, where they uh, where they do that sort of stuff. Yeah, he says um, it's uh, not too far uh, from um, not too far from the hospital. There's a uh, uh, on Pine Street. One uh, there's a building kind of behind uh, the 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 uh, no, not on Pine Street. Sorry on cedar there's a building behind the sacred hearts they, they they do the uh they they take care of all the uh post um mortem stuff there and uh sacred hearts let's see um you guys heard this name used before when you're at when you were hanging out of the hospital Dealing with wait, waiting to he get um or uh, I guess Jem did, uh because, uh Morrow and Amy were both kind of out of it, but you heard them mentioning Sacred Hearts once or twice. You get the uh the the hospitals run by some by the Catholic Church, uh, a bunch of nuns, the the uh, Sisters of Providence. Uh, they also run an orphanage just down the street called the Sacred Heart, the Academy of the Sacred Heart. Uh, it's just down the street from the, from the hospital. And apparently the bill, the there's two buildings on that, on that block. And the other one is the undertaker. And uh, one last question for you, son. Um, whereabouts do you uh, bury your dead when they can't be buried in the church grounds? Ah, he goes, well, there's, there's a cemetery over at Fort Missoula. Uh, and uh, then there's another one, and he kind of points out, you know, he kind of points back and says, across the river, up in the up on the hills in there. That's for all the other folks you know, that don't uh, right. want to be buried in the church grounds. Okay. Thank you kindly. All right, and with that, uh, if there's not any other, unless there's any other questions, we're going to go to break. No that other questions? Nope, that's All it. All right. Yeah. All right, so we're going to commercial. 
See you after the break. Quick. Yes. Open your eyes. We've arrived, my friends. To a place of such abundance and beauty, like none have ever seen before. Misty Mountain Gaming has all you could ever need for your tabletop role-playing accessories. Metal dice, acrylic dice, dice trays, and many other tabletop role-playing accessories can be found within the halls of MistyMountainGaming.com. The forge is always hot. The tanners and tailors always working to create new and improved equipment for adventurers such as yourselves. And just for joining us on this journey, take 10% off of your entire cart with the coupon code VALOR at checkout, saving you a little extra gold for that tankard of ale waiting for you at the inn. So grab what you need and start your journey now by heading to MistyMountainGaming.com where you too can find the treasure of a lifetime. And welcome back. Uh, all right, so where we last left off, you folks were stepping out of the butcher shop and heading on over to the Undertakers in order to investigate the mysterious death of Morgan Bennett. Uh, and I'm also just doing a little bit of calculation here for a second uh, for a question that we, uh, we were talking about during the break. Uh, so yeah, it would take you about, for the record, it would take you about five hours to get to the Haddock Farm from here. Okay. Um, so, it is about three hours before nightfall. You step out of uh, the butchers and you head on uh, over to uh, Cedar Street in search of the Undertakers. Uh, any kind of conversation you have along the way? Any sort of shot thoughts you want to share between each other? Now, out of the earshot of the general populace? I'd probably ask uh, Clayton what his, uh, like, what the plan is when we finally uh, try to get some information out of um, the man he seeks. Like, what's the, what is his goal, I guess? I just want to find out what he knows about John Wesley's whereabouts. And then I uh, want to find out if he can you know, point me in the right direction. If he even is close enough related to know anything about where that man might be. What are you prepared to do if he don't want to give you that information you seek? I'm going to do what I can to convince him that it's in his best interest to tell me. <laughs> All right. Just want to know what to expect. Uh, you make it uh, by this point over to the um, to Cedar Street and you're walking up to the uh, the Undertaker's place. Uh, you can see you can hear the sounds of some light hammering. Uh, coming from a little like a uh, shed off to one side of it. You can hear they're, they're apparently assembling a coffin as you come up. You can see uh, some children uh, in a very kind of unfortunately gruesome con uh, combination. The Undertaker's building and the, sh and the work outdoor work area is adjacent to some sort of playground where the kids are playing here. Uh, you can hear them uh, running around and playing jump rope uh, in this rather somber and gruesome location where there's several other coffins seen in a variety of states of uh, assembly as you walk up. Uh, a, a feller with white hair and kind of a looking something like a uh, uh, pasty white skin pulled over a skeleton himself a bit of age of years wrinkled kind of uh, looks up a couple nails stuck between very thin razor like lips 
And you, and as you as you approach, and he goes, "Hello, can I help Howdy. you?" Howdy, sir. Um, we are uh, we were here to try and pay our respects to Morgan Bennett. Ah, yes. Services have are not uh, in today, but if you want to take a look, I can help you with that. I am currently frozen stiff uh, outside of the um, the building. Just kind of kind of like caught in a daze, staring off. Give me a notice roll, Amy. Okay. And uh, Jim, you give me that notice roll as well. Mm. All right. So, oh. Amy, you, you got a raise. Uh, Jim, are you happy with that too for now? I'm not. I'm not. Can I use a group, Benny? You certainly may. All right. Happy with that three. I'm going to use a personal Benny. Okay. <laughs> three again. Can't shake oh, it. Oh, man. Not meant to be. Do I quit while I'm ahead, guys? Is it important, do you think? I feel like it's important. <laughs> I'll, share, I'll, share, I'll share details, maybe. Amy got a raise. So... All right. I'm going to leave it alone, then. I'm just looking yeah. around, like, scratching my butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... You're frozen, and it's a combination of your own fear, uh, uh, of the, you know, and also there's something eerily familiar going on, and you can't quite figure out what it is. You don't remember ever coming to this place before, but then you spot it. It's not the Undertaker's place. It's the kids in the playground over at the Sacred Hearts. There's a couple of girls playing jump rope and they're sing-songing a, a, a rhyme. And it, you remember it from when you were a kid. You remember the rhyme and you remember it, uh, it striking ice into your heart. And, and, and you know, you were so afraid of it. And when the other kids would, would say it and they found out and used to tease you with it. Um, it was the surest way to make you, to send you running away uh, home to hide. It was, a, it was a strange rhyme about some, about the flower sack men. Just kind of, yeah, eventually be able to come come out. And I just, out of nowhere, I'm just going to yell out uh, towards the kids. Hey! <laughs> Try and snap them out of, of what they're doing. And... Give me an intimidation roll. Okay. You scare those children. Untrained. Mm-hmm. I do not scare those. The kids, the kids stop and look at you, and like they shrug it off and go back to what they're doing. But it, it catches everybody else's attention, that's for sure. I'm not sure. I go over kid for you, Amy. <laughs> I kind of run over to Amy and, and try to like shake him out of his his like paralysis, um, and look at him. And go, hey man, you all right? You got this. Y yeah, yeah. Um, I just something about kids next to all this death just kind of stopped me in my tracks, as if uh, as if it was something I've experienced myself. But and then that that damned rhyme. That's anyway. You'll be all right, man. Um, 
what's buried in your mind probably best stay buried, if you ask me. No, oh, it's doing its damnedest to get out, but. So. All right. So the Undertaker. It's just like, um, he he gets up, kind of like um, puts down his tools and uh, uh, kind of w- walks slowly over to you folks. The man is of indeterminate but advanced age, um, and he um, he has that general creepiness that all <laughs> those who deal with the dead tends to have, and uh, kind of walks to the door and he says. Now, I ain't supposed to do this, but I suppose if you'd like to pay your respects, he holds out a hand, I can make it happen. What's like a lot of money at this point? Is it like, like if I give him a dollar, is he going to turn his nose up at me? No, no, that's probably, that's, that's, that's a significant amount of money. All right. So I... I, since, since I drank for silver, free earlier, I've got silver dollar to look at a dead body. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of just like slide it to him. He goes, All right. He sli- slips it into his vest pocket and opens up the door, takes you inside um, uh, through the side door of a. Uh, of his of his outdoor workshop area and, and into the the um, inside the the display room, I guess, of, of the co- of various coffins, and he down to a, a set of stairs, which leads down into the the cold cellar, where where the bodies are kept. And there, on a large metal table laid out, draped with a cloth, is the body of Morgan Bennett. And he, and he he stands in the one corner and he says, such a sad state of affairs. What uh what all are your professional findings here? Uh doctor? Professional findings? Oh, I'm not a doctor. I just make the coffins. I, well, see, seem, to, uh... I see to them getting buried proper, that sort of thing. I'm more of a spiritual offering my role is to hate the living and accepting their loss i see i see um and who all's been here to visit you other than us well mr bennett's brother of course he saw to the arrangements i helped him find a plot where his brother could be buried that about it so far. There will be a ceremony tomorrow, and then he'll be taken up to the hills. Can I take a look at the body and see if I see anything weird? Can yeah, like, certainly. Can I, can I use a cult? Uh, yeah. If you're uh, if you're using a cult, first of all, yeah, you can always use whatever skill you want, but you would probably first just want to look with a notice. That's and true. then, and then dial down on the information on any information you find for a uh, possible meaning. Okay. So I would like to roll notice to see if I can okay. see anything weird on this dude's body. All right. There's evil afoot. I can tell. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, a five. All right. So you are not necessarily particularly subtle about it you're not uh it does not go unobserved uh when you're looking at the looking at him but then you know you paid a man to show you the body it's it's gonna be kind of hard to pass it off like you weren't paying that much attention in the first place um what you do notice as you look at, as you look at the at uh, morgan you can see the the rope burn on his neck from where he was hung. And you see very similar markings on his arms. Like around the wrist area? Uh, they're, 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 so they're, they're like here, 
and here on both, on both the arms on the out just on just little bit, uh, hints of um red marks on the and bruises on the outside of both of the arms i reckon i've seen uh wounds like this like i look over at clay and and uh and amy i reckon i've seen wounds like this when uh someone's fighting someone off outside of the arm blocking or being wrapped up say uh undertaker you suspect any uh foul play on this here suicide oh it's not my place to say um I leave that to the authorities. It's my job just to make sure that they find their eternal rest. What do you think about this man having to be buried up in them there hills? Is that, uh, you think that's appropriate for a man of this caliber? It is a mortal sin to kill yourself. The church would never allow his burial in their grounds. How aware would I be of some of the legends of what could potentially be out there in the Weird West? Uh, that would be a call for an occult roll. Okay. Let's see what my occult score... <laughs> uh, oh, that is untrained. <laughs> Here we go. That's a two. Um, that's a no, zero. That's a zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you have, yeah. Nothing comes to mind if, if you're happy with that. If you're ha gonna Ooh. stick on that roll, um, <clears throat> if uh, Jim, did you want to make that a cult roll now? Absolutely, I do. Okay. This dude is suspicious AF, and I need to know more. Mm. A five. So, um, with that success, uh, you've heard of all sorts of um, stories about um, strange, vengeful things that use hanging as their as their motif, but. They're usually far from the Mizzou, from the Montana area. Uh, except, uh, well, there is the, the Montana vigilantes, but that's not really a cult. That's more of a historical fact. Okay. And what about the man? Does he seem like he might be more than he seems, or he's just a? <laughs> oh, he seems mighty creepy, but he yeah. just uh, it, it appears to be in that mostly human way. All right. It's just a little too cloying. See, uh, there's a there's a there's a smell about him. He keeps like a handful of uh, of musty uh, dried flowers in his pockets just to ward off the smell of working with the dead. And it just mm -hmm. adds to this whole weird, cloying, clovey mess. <laughs> well, I look over at Amy. Is, is he recovered at all? Um, yeah, actually, uh, you come down. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not going to speak for you. You're down here. How does Amy handling all of this? Pretty reserved, I'd say. And... Yeah, definitely being pretty quiet about it. Um, you know, probably maybe a little pale, but uh, holding together as best as I can. Okay, all right. So I am... Um... Mm -hmm. the, 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 well, I'll let you speak because... No, I was gonna. I was just gonna excuse ourselves because I, I don't, I don't see anything else that I might want to check out just yet, and ask All if right. this guy had any more information about what. You know, uh, were you acquainted with this man? Do you know what kind of man he was? Not really. Well, I, I've worked with, I've gotten supplies from Mister Bennett in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was always a 
kind man. From what I understand, well liked by his employees. Um. It is unfortunate that he died so soon after his friend. Perhaps that was his reason. Perhaps he could you... not handle the grief. You mean, uh, Russell? Yes. And where is he buried? Oh, the same place. Suicide, after all. And who uh, who came here looking for uh, looking to make peace with Russell? Sadly, he was less popular than Mister Bennett. I don't think anybody came looking for him to pay their respects. What makes you think they're friends? Well, I do know that Morgan would hire Russell quite a bit, even though he had a reputation about town of being of someone who was less than reliable as a worker. Not very dedicated to effort, if you know what I mean. I do. I do. I, I, th I think I do know what you mean. I kind of look over at the guys like the plot thickens. <laughs> One last question for you here, uh, and and then I think we'll be uh, on our way. Uh, there was another man who was in here just a few days ago, uh, a gunshot victim. Yes. Has anyone come in here mentioning anything about any retribution or anything like that? Oh. He goes... Uh, not specifically, but retribution is what will come for all who take the lives of another. It is God's will. And he begins, and, he, and, and his skin kind of pulls back from this skull-like face, leaving a very pleasantly uh, calm but vacant smile very well practiced smile that seems to hold no real joy I see well uh, thank you for the uh, the information that you've given us uh, I think we should probably let this man get back to his work though good day sir good day to you well, he, I'm going to tip a hat and describe him wearing a hat. Um, he goes, good day to you. And he leads you back up through the uh, up the stairs and out uh, out of the place. Uh, back onto the street and where the, you can hear the the children playing at the Sacred Hearts again. And uh, this time I'm going to give um, Jim another attempt at noticing the rhyme. And uh, I'm going to give it to Ryan, uh, sorry, Clay as well. Nope. Can I use uh, a plus one? You certainly may. Oh, there we go. Let's roll. Excellent. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, you take a plus one. So you both notice it. And a and Jim, you remember it as well. Mm -hmm. You remember the rhyme from when uh, gr from growing up here. Uh, Ryan, you hear it very clearly, but for you, it's the very first time you've ever heard it, and you find it fairly disturbing uh, we, and strange little rhyme, but it kind of makes sense in the setting here, right, you know, adjacent to a uh, an undertaker's place. Yeah, you're beginning... You know, it doesn't feel out of place. Uh, I'm going to play this here. See if you guys can hear it. Let me know if you guys can't hear it. Yeah, one second. Yeah. 
if it's playing, I can't hear it. Okay. All right. So if you're not hearing it, okay. It's very quiet. I'm just, I'm, I'll read it out to you then. I heard it. It's terrifying. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Late at night, when the moonlight glows from up on the hill where no tree grows, close your curtains, turn out the lights. The fuck men come looking for a fight. Hear them holler as they call your name. Don't you answer, or you're to blame. Close your curtains, turn out the lights. The flower sack men are a terrible sight. When the cold wind blows, they come to town. Don't you run, or they'll chase you down. Close your curtains, turn out the lights. The flower sack men are out tonight. No. Just kind of <laughs> at, a, at a fast walk, start uh, heading away. Yeah. Uh, not looking over. Um, yeah. <laughs> Amy and uh, and um, Amy and uh, Jim, you remember this rhyme um, from your childhood. It was made up by the kids as a sort of like a a recollection or a story of the night the um, the Montana vigilantes rode into town and killed a bunch of people, hung them up. Jim, you, uh, God, I, I hate that damn rhyme, but we got that uh, piece of burlap still. Yeah, I do. And I fish it out of my pocket, out of my, out of my backpack, and I hand it over to, to Amy. Just kind of take a look at it. As you recall, all, all the vigilante riders wore hoods to hide their identity when they, when they did this. And I, look, I don't know what size this, uh, this swatches, but <laughs> um, any identifying aspects to it otherwise that you know, would kind of start linking some of those things together? Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say. It is, a, it is a piece of burlap. What you find looking at it, though, is that it is, it is dirty. Okay. Burlap. It is, um, it does not look, you know, like a, a clean piece of burlap. It looks like something that um, is ragged and torn, torn and very aged, poorly aged. Like it's been through hell. This, uh, whatever sack this might have came from, uh, hasn't held any flower in some time, but. The weird thing is that third, that third verse. Uh, you guys don't remember that verse. You remember the first two, but the third verse is new. It's been added to over the years. Does the does the sample like the little swatch? Does it have a smell? Uh, yeah, it does. I'm not going to have you make you roll for this because uh, um, uh, the, the rolls are only to whether or not you uh, uh, attract attention to yourself. But sniffing a piece of burlap is not necessarily going to do much, uh, uh, create much of a commotion. It's got a something. It's got a funky, rotted, dank smell to it. Yeah, I immediately take like a long swig out of my flask after <laughs> sniffing it. Um, and I'd like to go talk to those children. All right. So, so I, I kind of just like a, approach, you know, I see him and I say, hey, who Jenny, taught you that Jenny rhyme? going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amy, you're getting the banny for that one. <laughs> oh, right. All right. Well, whatever you're up to, uh, Clayton, you tagging along. I need to go sit on the uh, other side of the street or something. All right, I'll go with you. 
All right, so Clay, you're going with uh, Jem. Yep. Well, Amy. Okay. So you, the the two of you, walk up to the the kids. You are know, up to the little like f- small fence that kind of separates the Undertakers from the mm-hmm. playground. And uh, the kid, uh, you track some of the uh, one of the kids over. Or what do you say? Yeah. Hey. Uh, what what's that? What's that? What's that rhyme? Y'all are saying it's real creepy. The flower sack men rhyme. And where'd you get that from? Oh, uh, I heard it from uh, Timmy, who uh, he heard it from his brother. And I think they heard it from, and they'd start listening, a, a string of names. Yeah, well, why don't you go ahead and sing that third, uh, that third verse for me again. When the cold wind blows, they come to town. Don't you run or they'll chase you down. Close your curtains, turn out the lights. The flower sack men are out tonight. You ever seen one of these flower sack men, little kid? Uh, they kind of look nervous for a second and go, yeah, really? Well, you know, yeah. sounds like you're real brave. Why don't you tell me what happened? Well, they, the, we used to sing it all the time and then uh, David, he saw the flower sack man and he told us about it. And we, we didn't believe him. But then one night we all stayed up late and we were watching outside the window and we saw them. They went, but they was about. Three weeks ago, we saw them on the, uh, it was, it was cold. It was got extra cold that night and we saw four. No, it was five, five men. And they came walking down um uh Harris Street and they looked so scary they had the flower sacks for faces and their clothes were all dirty and covered and then one of them looked up at us and that was it we all went to sleep yeah and uh all all your friends that saw this flower sack men um they're all here yeah all right sounds like you're a good kid is that the last you saw of them uh yeah. Yeah. Where'd you, I don't think. Where'd you see him coming from? Um, they kind of all, all the kids kind of just point off in a direction. Are they pointing toward the burial grounds of people who can't be buried at church? No, no, they're not. They're kind of pointing off in a completely different direction. Hmm. Give me a common knowledge roll. Want to go over there and see what's going on? I am going to use a group Benny to reroll. Okay. Uh, five. They point off 
generally westward. Um, but the way they're pointing, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's way, it's not a, like any particular landmark other than just, you know, pointing towards the Mullen Road. Right. Which is, the Mullen Road is, is, is uh, used to be the main thoroughfare through this whole part of Montana that it would take people and wag, uh, wagon carts all the way out to Oregon and Washington and stuff like that before the railroad came in. The uh, the way you got around or through most of the valley is down is straight down Mullen Road. Um, and then they all kind of point off in that direction. They go, they come from Council Hill. Like, they just know this for a fact. Uh, I thank you, strange children, for your advice. Um, I'm gonna go check on my friend, okay? Y'all stay safe. And the kids, you know, go back to their, to playing. So I go over and I check on Amy. I just kind of sit down next to him wherever he's squatting. Yeah, just, you know, just a little bit down the street, other side, other side of the street, you know boardwalk in front of a building whatever doing doing fine just want to keep distance yeah those kids are real weird but <laughs> kind of helpful in a strange way um oh they, they say we can find these men from up on uh up on that hill and what uh what gives you the idea that that would be what makes you think that's a good idea to go be Chasing after flower sack men. I don't know that it's a, a good idea per se, but at least we got we got somewhere we could start if we need to get out there and suss something out for the sheriff. Do you say the hill or council hill? Oh, council hill, yeah. And both of you guys can give me another common knowledge roll. Actually, you know, I'm not even going to have you make the roll. Council hill is uh, about two miles from Amy's farm, uh, Amy, Amy's mother's farm. It uh, it's, it was a big hill that the, a lot of you kids used to go to when, uh, and you play, um, and even though you were all told not to, you were told to stay away from Council Hill it's supposed to be some sacred place to the tribes. And actually, now I'll give you for additional information. I'll let you guys make those common knowledge rolls. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. An 11. Amy, you know that the tribes used to use, it's called Council Hill or Council Grove, depending on who you ask. Uh, because there's a ring of trees at the base of the hill, but no trees on it. And that the uh, the tribes used to meet there whenever they had to have a powwow between the different local communities. It was a place where they would go in order to hash out any problems. And it was like agreed upon that nobody was going to kill each other here. Right. This is the place for just talking through the stuff. And uh, that it was sacred to the tribes because it was a place where you and you it was a place where you had to behave because of how dangerous it was if you didn't there. It was too the, the place you heard stories um, that it was too the place was too close to the hunting grounds. That if you caused any, if you if you were, um, if you did any sort of violence on Council Hill, it would awaken the Manitous. Jim, you, you mean that uh, that grove we used to run around on as kids that we weren't supposed to? That very same one. They didn't seem to know anything about it, or. Uh, 
have anything else to say, but they did seem pretty positive that that's where these flower sack men come from. And I gotta tell you, knowing there's about four or five makes me wonder who's next. Now that's uh, much too close to the farm for my comfort. But uh, fortunately, I think that's a bit of a bit of a ride even for now this evening uh, but uh, first thing in the morning I think uh, I'm long overdue to go see mama and maybe check that out along the way I wouldn't mind helping you scout a couple places on the way up keep you safe and, uh, send my regards to mama Haddock Mom Haddock ain't gonna be upset that you're running with someone like me, is she? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think your uh, reputation was that far and wide, there, Mister McTaggart. Uh, you certainly uh, came in day one of this town, trying to spread it. So, who knows? Oh hell! When are you gonna stop holding that one against me? <laughs> Till the next one. Till the next one. I suppose I deserve that. Mama so makes you... great apple pie. So, <laughs> all right. Let's so, um, I brought back up the local map. As you can see, the red pin marking Missoula, where you guys are at. You can see Haddock Farm, um, about seven miles away, here, and that green pin there marking the location of Council Council Hill, along the way. So, where do you go from here? About what time gonna... is it, Marshall? Well, uh, let's say we'll, we'll see all the walking around and the looking at dead bodies and talking to the kids. It's killed about another hour. So you got about two hours before nightfall. And Amy, you said it was too late to ride out to uh, Haddock Farm for your, for your liking? It's a you, what did you say, Marshall? It was a good five Which hours. Was about five hours to get there. So it'd yeah. be you'd be it'd be two hours in in about two hours, and it'd be sunset. And mm -hmm. then by by five hours, it would be uh, three hours. Well, into dark, night. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, don't reckon I want to show up, uh, see Mama unannounced uh, that late after nightfall. So. Um. Yeah, and uh, you you off to uh, see some entertainment tonight uh, still, you know? Well, if uh, y'all will accompany me, I think we should seek our entertainment tonight at the Windsor Hotel. I'm always up for a good time. <laughs> Might take a swig out of my <laughs> whiskey. All right. So, uh, you're going to wait till you're going to go right now. You're going to wait till it gets dark. Probably wait. Well, Maybe we can go get some food now. Yeah. If it's, if yeah. it's supper time. All right. So we're going to just jump forward. Uh, you guys get some food. Uh, you have a, um, find a little, uh, find a little place to get some food. Do you just go back to the Demonicos for that? Or are you going to go find some place now? Yeah, sure. We can head back to the Delmonico. All right. We no got problem. a bunch of bacon we got to cook. <laughs> and Jim Although has some, I... uh, you know, uh, seeds to sow still. Yeah, I was about you to say. Have some if... there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, you going to make a play while, you, while you're there? You're going to take a, uh, use up one of your um, four shots remaining to collect some, um, some uh, interest? From uh, uh, Amy give us a good bacon it? pork related uh, pickup I line am. pun. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I think that uh, that Jem has been in the sun all day, you know, smelling those deadly smells coming from the Undertaker, and then had it out with those kids, and is just real glad to be alive. So, I think that Jem would want to take the opportunity to tell a beautiful lady how much uh, how much they are admired. All right. So, 
how you um, this is going to be basically a straight up persuasion role you're going to go for. Yeah, I think so. I don't think I'm going to do try to I, I feel like she's a more intelligent lady. She's not going to be swayed by any tricks. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK. Is uh, she just like hanging in the in, in Del Monaco? Yeah, she's just kind of, uh, you know, overseeing the place, kind of like uh, her job is just being um, uh, making sure a uh, hostess essentially for for the Demonico hotel and restaurant and uh just making sure everyone's uh um having a good time and enjoying the the food and stuff like that and you make a polite but pointed piece of persuasion in her general direction let's see it so uh i kind of swagger up to her um so you, say, yeah. uh hey hey uh Hey, Anne, uh, Miss Anne, it's real nice to see you. Today you look brighter than a sunflower. I gotta say, uh, feeling mighty grateful to see such a beautiful face around these parts. Let's see how well you pull that off. Uh, that's a, a success. All right, so that would put you at three successes now. Uh, in your in in two tries, uh, you need to collect a total of eight um, to unlock her heart. I'm gonna spend a penny. Yeah, okay. You gonna try that? Uh, gonna... Try and get a little bit more. Yeah, I think. Okay. So I think I never added back my bennies because I have been spending. I only spent one of my personal bennies, and I only oh. have. I have zero, so I'm going to put two on my tab. Yeah, and then sure. Re -roll. <laughs> Four again? Four again. One more Benny. <laughs> All right. You know, we know where your priorities lie. There you go. Get it. <laughs> yes! There it is. That is an eight. All right. So that's going to be two successes, bringing your grand total up to uh, four. All day. Uh, perfect. So I, I give her, I give her my best, like rakish smile as like I take a hanky out of my back pocket and kind of dab at the sweat on my face, and just like give her like a real good, hmm, like I'm just taking her in. <laughs> All right. Okay. So two of your tries have been have been met, and you're you're ahead of the curve. You got you got four. You have four, and all you need to do is get another four in the next in the next three. Mm -hmm. And you think you've, yeah, you're doing well so far. She okay. seems oh, she seems she takes the compliment. She's oh well, flattery flattery will get you everywhere. I sincerely hope so. Jim, give her the bacon. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, can, can I can I hand her the bacon? <laughs> uh, sure yeah so um we we really appreciate me and my me and my friends here uh we we really appreciate your kindness and generosity in preparing having your people prepare such a such a delicious and hearty meal for us uh three times a day it's real real great your hospitality here and um i just thought i would give you know give this little gift to you to as a way of saying thank you for uh for your for your I don't know your your charm, ma'am. You're you're just real something else. Okay. You want to try? You are you trying to make that a, a second attempt, a third attempt? Kind of, yeah. If I can. Yeah, like I wanna, you, you like, can. Yeah. In the deal. Yeah. Amy's so face ahead. goes from uh, excitement of this bacon that he's been uh, drooling over all day to realizing that uh, Jem is now giving it away. <laughs> Ooh. Well, the <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, apparently the offer of fresh meat is not that kind of a wooing thing. <laughs> but it should be. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Spin a Benny and oh uh. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh I'm afraid uh I don't know if I should tell you how many bennies are left in the pot here. 
Uh, according to my calculations, there are eight more group bennies. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going to convince this lady that that bacon is is the, are the new roses. I'm doing it. A gift of salted pork is just what the lady needs. <laughs> Three. Can I None. use a plus one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and with plus one, uh, that'll bring the uh, wooing of Annie Halstead up to five successes and three tries. Yeah, she damn, impressed? that's my revenge bacon. Is she impressed by my meat? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, she goes, it is heftier than I expected. <laughs> that's what all the girls say. <laughs> and she uh, takes it and goes, I'll make sure this is cooked up proper. Thank you very much, ma'am. Hopefully I can get it served to me tomorrow morning from your fair hands, should you be so moved. <laughs> Miss Halstead, I would uh, very much uh, prefer if I could have some. Uh, me and me, Mr. Clayton would, would appreciate some of that bacon uh, with uh, steaks here tonight, if you don't mind. Uh, but certainly save a slice or two for, for our uh, blabbering counterpart here <laughs> with his eggs. <laughs> Don't shame right. someone who's who's found uh, a light in the world. Just just take it in, Amy. Take it in. <laughs> All right. Um, and she goes off and get to give that uh, the the cut to the uh, the cook. And uh, you guys have the, your your meal brought to you. Some of the bacon is brought out with it. And um, around nightfall. Uh, you guys are done with your uh, your dinner. Oh, hey, there you are. <laughs> Fresh bacon. <laughs> I love your commitment to authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so come nightfall, you're done with your meal. You're done with dinner. You're back out on the street, heading down to the Windsor. Um, the street of Missoula, the front street on Missoula is beginning to pick up. At nighttime, the the saloons up and down this side of Front Street are are rather loud and raucous as ever. But the the sound seems to fade as you move further uh, north um, up Front Street to the other side, and then the just the, just the distant hooting and hollering kind of fades off in the distance as you get to the quiet side of town. Not. Uh, not saying much. I mean, the quiet side of town is about half a block from the noisy side of town. Uh, there's not much town. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but when you get there, you you find the, the Windsor Hotel is a sort of upscale establishment. Uh, a bit fancy on the inside. Lots of crushed red velvet upholstery. That sort of thing. There's a billiards table. Uh and um, and other, it's almost like as close as they can get to having a gentleman's club, and the, in the old proper sense of a gentleman's club, not in the modern sense of a gentleman's club. Um, here in Missoula, um, Clayton, you, I feel the, a tad underdressed. You do. I mean, this is where uh, Missoula's business elite gather to work on deals and the and the and the like uh there's lots of brandy and cigars um the odor of brandy and cigars throughout the throughout the halls as you as you come in not a whole lot of beer or piano playing i uh i dust off before i go in like as best i can i just kind of try to like beat myself i take my hat off smack it a couple of times try to get as spruced as I can. Okay. Well, and once you're in, what do you do? Yeah, you know, the, a couple of the uh, the, the people kind of look off, you know, askance off in your direction, but no one seems to try and stop you from coming in necessarily. Um, it is a hotel; they'll take anybody's money. Yeah, I'll I'll amble up to the counter. And ask for a cigar. All right. You I go with them and I get uh, I get two fingers of whiskey. Uh, 
they they present you with a with a, your selection of cigars. Uh, there is a um, there is a there is a fifty cent cigar. There is a two dollar cigar, and there is a five dollar cigar. Um, I put two dollars on the counter and go. I'm not feeling real fancy tonight. All right. And uh, what are the rest of you doing? I just sipping my whiskey and like kind of taking in the place, trying to see if okay. uh, there look like there are any troublemakers that might give Clayton uh, run for his money. <laughs> I mean, uh, you looking around the place, uh, well, you're not really sure uh, who's who just yet, but there does appear to be a couple of guys that are dressed more like you are, you all are, in the sense of not dressed fancy and in business suits or anything like that. There's a couple of thick-necked ranch hand types here, and um, and they they don't appear to be partaking necessarily in the in the the billiards or much of the conversation. They uh, they do appear to be standing around like they're they're also keeping an eye on uh, other folk. Who might be, we don't who recognize might be them racers. at all, do we? These two, no. You, know, you haven't seen them before. I'll kind of discreetly ask: Is Mister Harden in this evening? Uh, the this, the man with who at the table there with the cigars thing goes, well, yeah. And he points over to to um, the the billiard game that's going on in the back. And he points out which one he says, the man in the green vest would be Mr. Harden. I appreciate it. And I slide him another dollar. He gratefully takes it. If we wanted to uh, try to challenge somebody to pool, what would that, what skill would that require? Is yeah, that that's a good question. Gambling? Like athletics? Uh, hmm. It's gambling's more about bluffing and tricking and stuff like that. I think that a pool game, while gambling is involved, I would call that more athletics. It is a game of skill, uh, at 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 um, skill of uh, agility and aim and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'll go with athletics rather than straight up gambling. Do pretty that's, good. With, uh, that's uh, my game there. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> the fellas so, and I go, hey, uh, y'all want to get a game going or just see what this man is up to? I, I will call it a mix in the sense that you have to sort of to get to win big. You have to, like, lure them in. And that's a bit of gambling and bluffing and that sort of stuff, you know. We're down for uh, some billiards. So, um, before you, uh, I mean, does, uh, play do anything before you guys have a chance to, um, work out this plan? Is, uh, your point as Mr. Harden is uh, pointed out to you? Uh, I'm going to kind of make my way over there. Uh, not like walk right up to him, but mm -hmm. move a little bit closer to the billiard tables. Uh, like I'm kind of scoping out their game or, you know, seeing if I want to get my own table or something like that. Okay. Um, well, unfortunately, there is a, appears to be just the one table. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and uh, as you, you move on over there, you can you get a snippets of the conversation. He uh, uh, Harden is talking with some other man and they're discussing Actually, they appear to be uh, very upset about something. Um, and uh, they apparently there's been some rustling going on of, of uh, horses and uh, animals, other animals. And uh, that uh, they're... And the, the the other man that Harden's talking to, and he's like going, you know, Harden, I backed you when you ran for when you ran for sheriff, and, and it's a 
damn shame you didn't win, because I know you would have taken care of this, not like Moses. Uh, Moses is letting too much of this stuff slide. It reminds me of the old days. Upon hearing that, I turn and look at both of them directly and say, Sounds to me like you've got some ne'er-do-wells you're looking to get rid of. The two men kind of look off in your direction. And they go, well, if you don't mind. Uh, I don't recall inviting you to this conversation. Just saying. If it, something needs doing and the law don't seem to have the will to do it, there are other men about here who might be able to be of assistance. And the, the two of them kind of share a look between each other and then back at you. And they're like, What's your name, son? Both of these men appear to be in their in, in their 50s, so they feel confident in calling you son. Clayton McTaggart. Well, Mr. McTaggart, uh, my name's Dwight. Dwight Harden. And I got plenty of men that can do what needs to be done. What makes you think that you're going to be any better at it? I, uh, lower my voice as I say, ask McClellan's boys just what I'm capable of. So, Jim, you see how the ball is lined up here, <laughs> and you have the other on the other end corner. It's all about the angles. You want to bounce off and cream, and uh, you know it's all about it's all about those angles. You really need to, you know, you got to think ahead of the shot, not not where you're directly going, but got to look past it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other the other man there with um, Harden goes. My name's McClellan. My name's John McLennan. McClellan. What do you got to say about my boys? He puts down the he puts down the pull pull cue. Mm -hmm. He can walks slowly over uh, across the uh, uh, around the room to you. To look, give you a look up and down. You can see the two thick men. Uh, ranch hands kind of like get nervous. They go, Mr. McClellan, hold it, boys. This man has something to say about you. So I, I look McClellan in the eyes and I go, me and one of your hands had a little bit of a dispute the other night that he came out on the wrong side of. The way I see it, I owe you, and I owe you big. Out of character, I just want to say, good save. Man. <laughs> Back into character. <laughs> McClellan's eyes squint. He goes, yeah, Clayton McTaggart, right? That's correct. Yeah, I heard your name. You got a real strength of character to come walking in here. Give me a persuasion roll. Okay. Five. That's a success. All That's right. a success. Yeah. All right. He goes. He, he his eyes squint for a moment, and you, you're 
you're beginning to worry. And kind of goes, and he stops, and he, and he just turns away, and he goes, well, Bodhi should have given you a harder look. My, as I reckon, man like you means what he says. So do I. So do I. Oh. You say you got a means to take care of our rustling problem. Here's a feller. Sheriff won't go arrest. You want to put an end to him like you did old Bodie. Make our lives a little bit easier. What's this fella's name? French feller. His name's, uh, uh, Blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah. Blackjack Gillette. Horse thief. Rustler, all around bad felt the character. Yeah, gotcha. but but for some reason or another, Sheriff Moses says there ain't enough evidence. We all know it was him. Where does this blackjack fella tend to hang his hat? I don't know. Perhaps at his bar. The Blackjack. You recognize the name of the bar. It's the it's the the Lumberjack Saloon. Huh. Well, I know the place. I've been by there. And, uh, Mr. Harden, this fella is giving you a hard time as well? Well, uh, Harden, Harden is kind of like just kind of leaning back and watching this kind of play out. And he goes, yeah, well, rustlers uh, make life difficult for anybody who runs a animal husbandry in this valley. That's for sure. Horses. Cows, pigs, all that sort of stuff is a suffering at the hands of the lawless men that believe that they can do anything they want without retribution. In the past, when I've been uh, approached or uh, volunteered my services for this particular kind of work, the usual arrangement was that the parties would pool resources to employ me. Now, seeing as how I owe Mr. McClellan here a great deal, I am willing to waive my usual fee and chalk this up as a repayment for uh, the debt that I have incurred from him. Uh, but for you, Mr. Harden, I would ask just one thing. He goes, oh, he kind of gives a half smile, not really sure where this is leading. And he goes, yeah, well, okay. I don't make any deals when I don't know what all the cards are. What are you asking for? I lean in very close and I keep my voice down as I say this. I'm looking to find John Wesley Harden. Do you know where he is? Give me a notice roll. Plus one. Take it. You want to take a plus one on that? Yeah, yeah I'll take a plus one. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that turns that seven into an eight. And as you pull back, Dwight Harden says, I'm sorry, sir. I think you're mistaken. 
not connected in any way to that man. And you can see sweat begin to bead on his forehead. And he looks a little nervous, like he wants to end this conversation. I continue to take a step back and say, oh, well, my mistake, sir. But I kind of uh, wink at him. And blow a little bit of smoke his way. And then I turn <laughs> back to McClellan and say, so I'll see what I can do about this uh, business that uh, we find ourselves in here. I at least owe you that much, sir. Uh, I'll be in touch regarding uh, what can be done about this particular Blackjack fella. All right. Well, the day is turned quite interesting, McClellan says, and he holds out a he holds out a hand to shake yours. I shake his hand. Looking forward to this. Could be the start of something big. Could be. Could be. And as I say that, I look over my shoulder back in uh, Dwight Harden's direction. He uh, won't make eye contact with you now. He's, uh, uh, and you see him, he's become very flustered and like he's uh, beginning to apologize to the other gathered friends here. And he says, ah, I think uh, I might be all done for the evening. Uh, this is a very good cigar and I'm feeling a little lightheaded. I'm gonna go lay down home for a little bit. You understand? You know, but he's 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 not like taking off immediately, but he's turned his back to you and he's uh, talking to uh, other folk now trying to uh, beginning to say his goodbyes. To the assembled. And with that, it's a little early. Anything else you guys wanted to do tonight? Might want to head. Um... How far are we from the Occidental? Are we already on the other side of town? Uh, you are, I mean, you're about you know, like two blocks away. It's kind of hard to be anything more than four blocks away from anywhere in town. Um, I might want to yeah. go see Betty and ask about the man she saw. That was being weird. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be able to talk Clay into doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so let's hear I'll, it. I'll go with you guys. I... Let's hear. Let's hear Jim ask Clay about it. So I'm thinking about going up back to that Occidental and uh, find out a little bit more. Maybe ask Betty some questions, see if she knows anything about this mystery man that she saw uh, the other night. Y'all want to come with me? I uh, don't plan on being there long. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll tag along. As I'm watching Dwight exit and uh, kind of chuckling to myself, I, I look over and go, I suppose I can do that. And then I look over at uh, John McClellan and say, where is the best place to get in touch with you, sir? He looks back and he goes, well, you can always leave a message here. Or you can ride out to my ranch. If I'm not here, it's where I'll be. I'll be in touch. All right, and with that, you guys head back. Uh, you um, head out of the Windsor, back onto Front Street, and on up to the Occidental. When Is you that get the there. Same is that hmm? the same direction that uh, that um, Dwight is going to go home? Uh, Dwight, no, Dwight seems to disappear into a back room for a little bit. Okay. He like he has a other way. There are other ways to get in and out of the and he does not appear to want to walk out in, you know, in the with you guys. And, it, you know, <laughs> he, uh, um, he did kind of he says his goodbyes around the room, 
ducks out, you know, through a back door, and you know, you don't see him after that. Okay. But you walk into the uh, the Occidental, and it's a much more livelier place as you get there. Um, music is is uh, going. Uh, uh, cards are dealing. There's a large group of people here. There appears to be a impromptu sort of wake being held for uh, Morgan Bennett, seeing how most of the people in here now are, are people from the work crew earlier today. Um, uh, you guys kind of have to, it's actually pretty full compared to how sparsely it was, how sparsely populated it was earlier today. And you got to find your way through it. And um, you do suss out Betty out of, of the saloon girls. There's two, so it's not that hard. And uh, she appears to be a, um, a another dark haired woman. Um, with her hair is kind of set in like wave curls and wearing a very nice light blue uh, dress with um with darker ribbons. And she appears to be um, uh, polite to all the men here. They 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 pay to have her sit at the table and she drinks with them or, you know, occasionally, you know, they, they get up and dance when the music hits. She she's very nice and popular and polite, but that's about it. She's pretty you know, professional about all it's, you know, there's there's just not enough women to men ratio. And sometimes a, a gentleman just wants a little bit of company while he's drinking. And that's what they're that's what they do. So I motion to the guys to, like, take an open, you know, try to find an open table. Mm -hmm. um, and can I see what she's drinking? Does it look like she's just drinking water? Pretty much. Yeah. All right. She's so I would water. Like to... or sometimes you, you, see, you see like she's getting like a whiskey in water, which is way, but it's way more water than whiskey. Right. So, so it looks, I wanna... like, looks like she's drinking with people, but she's not. It's never enough to really affect her. OK, so I want to order um, like a nice, like frosty glass of water for her and flag mm -hmm. her down to come and sit with us. OK. Easily done. Uh, the, the, the the most difficult part is getting the table space, but you eventually you do. And when she and she comes around and uh, she sits down, she goes, "Hi, my name's Betty. Are you having a good time?" Much better time now that you've arrived. Wow, oh, that's one heck much. of a dress. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. I just had it made. And she kind of like begins to play with the, the lacy frills on it and, and kind of straighten straighten the a couple of the ties. She seems very proud of it. You look be more beautiful in the morning glory, if I do say so. These are my friends, Amy and Clayton. You know, I'm Jim. Jim uh, nice to meet you. I, I'd <laughs> almost say that Miss Betty here looks as as bright as a sunflower. <laughs> you might say that. You might say that. Uh, don't mind my friend. He's he's colorblind. Anyway, so <laughs> what uh, we we were we was wondering. Um, we were talking earlier uh, to Joseph and he was saying uh, what a nice gentleman he was uh, walking you on home the other night because you had a little little spot of trouble with a man. Is that correct? Uh, I'm sorry. What now? Did you have uh, Joseph walk you home? I heard we heard that uh, sometimes there are men that come here and don't treat the ladies as nice as they should. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it's. It is a um, she kind of like look, looks for the word uh, peril of the occupation when you work in a saloon, you know, um, it is my job to be friendly. And sometimes a uh, gentleman doesn't quite understand that I'm friendly to everybody equally. And it's not particularly a special occasion for them. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to tell you, ma'am, um. There's nothing that we three hate more than uh, than a man who can't be bothered to be a gentleman. Do you remember what this man might have looked like in case we can uh, keep an eye on him? We've got some some people we want to keep safe over at uh, the other other place where we're staying. Well, the thing is, I don't really know who it was. I didn't get a good look at him. I was just I, there, there was a feller outside. 
And um, this was about three weeks ago. And uh, then I saw him again. Uh, and they were just standing across the street um, over by those trees over there. And she points out and kind of points out the window. And they were, you know, stand, standing there in the shadows of the trees. And it was just really weird. I mean, they were just standing there and staring. And I can't say they were staring at me necessarily, but I did not feel safe. And, uh, and then they I saw them again uh, last night. Stand, just standing out there again. And it was really disturbing. And uh, and that's when I so I asked Joe to make sure that it, uh, it would be OK if I stayed a little later and he would walk me home. I see that was a real smart decision of you, ma'am. Um, let, let me ask you, was was Morgan Bennett in here uh, slaking his thirst last night? Um, no, Morgan doesn't usually come in here, but he did stop by real quick. But it wasn't, he didn't stick around to drink or anything like that. It's a and shame did, about uh, him. It is a real shame. What, what, uh, why in the world would he have called on over here and not stuck around to talk to you? Uh, well, he had, I'm, I'm not really sure. I think it was something about someone had come looking for him a couple days before that. And he came by to see what that was all about. He's been pretty busy, so he didn't come over right away. Eh, we understood him. So he stopped in, talked with Joseph for five minutes. Couldn't have been more than that, then went home. And do you remember who this man was who was looking around here looking for him? Give me a persuasion roll. Yeah, this has been going on long enough that I want to see if... Uh, what you know? Okay, seven. Um, you want to take another plus, or you leave it in the bank for now? Would like to take a plus. Okay. All right. Got one left of those plus ones. She kind of leans in, all conspiratorial, at this. She goes, "He was a strange one. Hmm. Tall and thin and handsome, but..." Also kind of, I mean, he has a strong jaw, but he looked kind of sickly, like he hadn't been out in the sun in a long time. And he's kind of had a sunken look about him. Uh, he never left his name, though, but he was liquored up something strong. You could smell him the second he walked in the in the room. Um, see, he had a real sort of deep rasp voice. It's like, it's like someone was, uh, like he'd swallowed a toad or something. He just asked mm, about sure. Morgan Bennett. Uh, he just asked about Morgan Bennett, asked when he, if he came in here. We told him, but you know, the sometimes stops by but not for long and he just nodded turned and walked out didn't even say goodbye that is odd you'd think with such a beauty in his path he would at least have uh, taken his leave in a more polite way um, oh well now aren't you the charmer oh, oh no ma'am I just I just tell it like it is let me ask you something else. Um, when Morgan come around here to ask about who was talking about him, did he seem surprised when Joseph told him about this mystery person? I'm sorry, who? What? Morgan, when he came in here to ask about the man who'd been inquiring about him, did he seem surprised that someone had come asking for him? Did he seem to re recognize the man? No, he seemed just as confused about it as as, uh, as we were. Um, guy, man didn't leave a name or anything like that and got the impression that whoever it was didn't actually ever come looking for him uh, at, at, at his business or at the at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, it was 
we were we he it was very strange we all thought it was it's weird so now I, that I, I think go about it. drink it's, he goes it's weirder now that i think about it seems how that was the last time any of us talked to morgan i address this to the table like to both of you guys i'm not just mm -hmm. talking to the lady at the um i say three weeks ago hmm wasn't that uh right when right around when russell uh come up come up dead oh yeah that was a night what do you mean uh night there ma'am russell russell is a happy feller i mean a bit lazy if you ask the people he worked with but generally he made up for it in personality He's kind of a talker you know he uh could tell a tale and use them quite um often to not get not do the things he was supposed to be doing and spend a lot of time john at the work site that sort of thing you know but folk didn't slight him much for it the stories were fun entertaining but that night, he was real jumpy. Um, wasn't he telling any. Yo, oh, yeah, he oh. was in here. He was real jumpy, kind of quiet. Tried to ask him what was bothering him, and he just said he's been having bad dreams lately. Wouldn't talk. Wouldn't go into it other than that. Uh, thank you so much for your time, ma'am. You, uh, you've really helped us. We'll, uh, keep an eye out for this son of a gun. Make sure we have words with him so he minds his manners the next time he comes around here. All right. Amy. Three weeks back. Right about when your dreams started up again. All right. And with that, it is 830, which means it's time for me to draw this episode to a close. I want to say thank you all out there in the audience for watching. And if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, please, you know the drill. There's a subscribe button. There's a bell for notifications. You hit that and, and you kind of like it's the cheat code. For, for YouTube and for this game allows us to show it to more people. Also, write something down in the comments. Write about your favorite scene. I, that's how I'm going to find out what you guys liked. I'll try and do more of in the future. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to go around the table here and say uh, hello to everybody else and see uh, if they got anything interesting coming up they want to talk about. I'm going to start with... Uh, with uh, Jim, J uh, Jamie, Freeman, Jameson. I don't know why I'm saying it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything you want to promote, talk about? Sure, yes. So, um, hi, everybody. I have been Candace Magnificent as Jim Freeman. Um, you can find me on uh, YouTube and uh, Instagram at Candace the Magnificent. You can also find me on Twitter as that Candace girl. Um, I will be here every Wednesday to party on with you guys and roll through the Wild West. Um, and then sooner rather than later, I will be on um, a fantastic 5e Star Wars podcast with Todd Moonbounce. Ooh, yay. Well, let's take with that. Let's go over to Todd Moonbounce and uh, find out more about this. Hey, Todd, what is a, a, uh, some sort of, uh, ooh, I got music got dramatic all of a sudden there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yes, uh, Todd Moonbounce, everyone. Uh, great night. Thanks, everyone, for being out here. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter and Twitch at Todd Moonbounce. Uh, yeah, so a couple things. Uh, I am one half of the Dungeon Jedi Masters which is a podcast and more talking all about the Star Wars 5th uh, edition fan conversion. And one of those projects is a narrative campaign podcast, Think Radio Show, that Candace uh, will be a member of as we're getting that going. Looking forward to that. 
Uh, so check out DungeonJediMasters.com for uh, info there. And then one other thing I also want to uh, mention is if you'd like some more Deadlands and if you would like to play as chat, uh, this Friday I will be picking back up Chat Plays Deadlands. So you in the chat will get to vote on uh, what the player does in the game. So we'll be continuing our adventure of the Crater Lake Chronicles uh, within Deadlands. So find that on Twitch, Todd Moonbounce. And again, thank you for being here. And uh, down at the end, Clayton R. McTaggart was played tonight by Ryan Howard. Got right, anything guys. To... Let's hear yes. it. Let's hear what you've been up to. Yeah, so uh, once again, it is at Howard underscore Ryan Gregg on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the show is Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard. And it's an RPG talk show that streams live on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, this past week, Todd was actually on the show with Tegan from the Dungeon Jedi Masters, and uh, we talked a little bit about Star Wars 5e, so some great synergy. If you uh, you like me and you like Todd and you want to hear a little bit more about that, you can catch it over on YouTube, Rolling Bones with Ryan Howard. And uh, this coming week, I'll be reviewing Rocket to Russia by John Hambone McGuire and The Phylactery 3 by Levi Combs of Planet X Games. Uh, so once again, you can catch that at Rollin' Bones Ryan here on Twitch Monday night at 8 p.m. Central. All right. And I have been your marshal for the evening. My name is Cheyenne Wright. Uh, you can catch my um, you catch the stuff that I do every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at girlgeniusonline.com, where I color the girl, the three-time Hugo Award-winning Girl Genius Steampunk webcomic series, uh, graphic novels that have been running for 20 years. Uh, although, if you are a regular purveyor of such, you may have noticed that past couple of uh, nights there has not been an update, and that is because um, the fine penciler, artiste over there, Philip Folio, has recently had to have rotator, rotator cuff surgery performed and uh, his arms in a sling and he just can't draw which means that i'll be taking over pretty soon with a short story for october which is something i had not been planning on but now i'm going to be doing so it should be a lot of fun and so uh in addition to still running this show um i'll be doing that as well so please follow that and read it i'd love to hear what you guys think for and uh for everyone at home everybody here at the cast i just want to say thank you for watching everyone at valor studios thank you for hosting my name is cheyenne wright mm -hmm.